Hey everyone, this is Zach Brandon and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Congratulations with Tell Everybody I Don't. Um, this, I feel like in a time where, you know, people are having a hard time, you know, being motivated and creative and stuff. Like, I feel like that kind of inspired you to create more music. Um, can you talk a little bit about the creative process of this song and what initially kind of kickstarted this song, um, like when you started writing it? Sure. Um, in terms of the creative process, it's always the same for me. I always write everything on an acoustic guitar first because I think that the song needs to be able to stand. I think that if, you know, everything goes well and, you know, the songs are blowing up and, and then you're playing a charity event and you're playing with an acoustic guitar and it doesn't sound like the same song, it's not going to hit people the same way. So I find it very important to, whether you're a piano player or a guitar player or whatever, I think it's important to write the song on an instrument first to so make sure that the song can stand on its own two feet. And that's how I write every song. Regarding the spark for the song, it was fueled, I'm sure you could probably guess, by a breakup. And I like to write a lot, like my lyrics are a lot about sort of using my life as an example for other people to say, oh, he goes through that and he's talking about it. I've actually gone through that too, but I didn't, I didn't want to talk about that thing. I thought I was only one. And in this song, I, my take on it was most breakup songs are very polarized. It's either this is the worst thing ever, I'm so sad, et cetera, et cetera, or I'm going to go out in the town. What a great thing that, you know, I'm single now. And the reality of life is that in most scenarios, there's a bit of both for both people. It's a bit of bittersweetness and a bit of, like the song says, sometimes I think about you, sometimes I don't. But on the days that I do, I tell everybody I don't. And it's about how, you know, you know you made the right decision, but you still miss them sometimes. And that's totally normal and healthy and part of the process. Um, and, that, and yeah, and that's what the song is about. When writing a song like that, especially how you mentioned, like you talk about experiences, um, you know, you open up. Uh, with your audience and you give them a more personal piece of your life that, you know, not a lot of people are comfortable, like even telling their best friends about. So mm -hmm. how do you get comfortable in that aspect and, and, and vulnerable when it comes down to writing music, knowing that there's other ears listening? I've gone through, you know, a lot in my life and I've seen a lot already, even though I'm only 24 and I, I've, I feel like I've gotten some sort of extra understanding on the human psyche and in terms of, I know that we all have certain experiences and I know that people are a lot less judgmental than they might come off. Like as a, like as a rule of large numbers, I'm not talking about like one person at a time. People in general are more, are more, desperate for connection and desperate for knowing that they're not alone. And so I think that by being open, it invites other people to be open in their own capacity. And I think that when you show vulnerability, the strength to be vulnerable, people aren't going to judge you. People, at least the people that you want to be around you, the people that see you being vulnerable are going to say, good for that guy or girl, whoever, good for them for having the strength to be open. That, like, nobody's going to be like, oh, you're such a weirdo because you think about the girl you just broke up with two weeks ago and you're not like some strong man who doesn't give a shit. Sorry, I'm not, probably shouldn't say bad words, but like, nobody's going to think that, but everyone thinks people are going to think that. And I sort of take that and I also apply that kind of thinking to all my other songs that I write too, that it takes a certain strength to be vulnerable. And I think everyone knows that. When you mentioned um, that you start music, you know, it's good to start music with an instrument. Um, how do you figure out the delivery of the lyrics? It, 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 does, the, does the music kind of, or the instrument kind of guide you with that? Or is that, something, is that something that you kind of like, you know, as you're writing it and 
trying it different ways? Like, how does that really happen for you? This is a bad answer, but I think this is something natural that I'm never going to be able to understand. And I think that that's my sort of, I think that's everyone's sort of bread and butter. I think that the way that you interpret lyrics and meter and intonation and all of those things, how you trail off of a sentence, I think that's what makes everyone's art their art. And so, I mean, in terms of the songwriting specifically, I like to figure out, like, I like to try to figure out some structure to the song. I like to try to figure out the hook and, and then branch off of that meaning to describe that meaning better in the verses, if that makes sense. The hook is sort of home base where if you listen to the hook, you know what the song's about. But then the verse sort of fills in the gaps and gives you the little details and the cool ways of saying the same thing. But in terms of how I deal with like melody vocally and how to say the words and stuff, I think it just happens. I've, I don't think I've ever taken a song with lyrics and delivered it differently than how I wrote it. Of course, there might be some melodic changes and whatever, like as naturally happens when you're performing live and things like that, just to keep it interesting. But in terms of going into the studio, it's the same as when you first start it. It's the same as whatever comes naturally. That's what your art is because also, I'm sorry to trail on so long, but this, I, this is really of interest for me. Um, if you try to change how you interpret things to react to charts or to react to pop music or to react to things outside of you, then the thing that's consistent, which is your art, is going to be inconsistent. I think something that's really important for me with my music that my mentors, Charlie Midnight and Jan Fairchild have really taught me is that the thing that's most important and the thing that gives you longevity as a musician is the consistency in your music in that it sounds like a Zach Brandon song. And so if you start reinterpreting how you interpreted it the first time, what came naturally to you, it's going to change every time. But if you trust your instinct, it's always going to sound like you because even if it's changing over time, it's evolving naturally with you. Does that make sense? No, it does. It does. And, and it, it helps to have mentors um, like Midnight and, and Fairchild because they've been around for some time and they know, you know, they know what's what the do's and the don'ts. Um, as far as like, collaborating with them like what was that collaboration like and what was that chemistry like between the three of you well one of them's really great i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> um no they are like my second and third dads that's what i always call them they are like family to me and it's hard to say because i have a very unique relationship with them because they believed in me from when I really didn't have much. And we have this trust between the three of us that I don't have as much experience co-writing yet, but from what I understand from what my friends and that are musicians tell me and from the experiences I hear from Charlie and Jan, it's very difficult to find people that you can trust outside of a project. And what we have is we hang out without talking about music all the time. And that, the, what that's opened for me is that's opened the ability to trust them and to grow and learn from their experiences instead of thinking I know everything. And they've taught me a lot, not only about music, you know, a lot, a lot of the music stuff comes from me. It's guided by them, but like I was saying before, it, it definitely comes from me and it's, it's sort of massaged. But what's been more important that I've learned from them is learning about how to handle yourself as a career musician, how to treat, how to treat musicians fairly and pay them all the same and, and pay people on time and you know, how to view yourself as, as a musician and how to uphold yourself as a respectable person as a musician. And so I think that's, from their experience, I think that's what really 
you gain in experience as you be as you're in the industry for longer, which is what they have. It's not it's not about the music more than it is about or it's it's about the person and how you treat others more than it is about the music. If that that's kind of like a bad I phrased it badly, but I think you get it basically helped you kind of build that foundation of like who you are. Right. Um, and and because I have that from them, I can t- if if you know I wanted to work with someone else or if they wanted to work with someone else and I can take that and apply it elsewhere. But if if you took the music aspect, that's something that's between the three of us that you can't take somewhere else. You can add people into your mix, but you can't take your mix and bring it with you somewhere else. Right. But what I can take is how to be a musician, an artist, I should say, not a musician. Right. I feel like that's going to help you um, be more of a, like you mentioned, a career artist instead of just like a hit today and then forgotten tomorrow. Like, I feel like there's those two different types of artists are, you know, that's, that's the reason why, you know, an artist can have longevity and an artist, Mm -hmm. you know, fails to do so. So that's cool. That's, that's awesome. Um, now, as far as like music goes, what else can fans expect? Like now that, you know, tell everybody I don't is out. Um, are you working like on a body of work? Um, do you see like another single coming up anytime soon? By the way, I haven't seen you hydrate. You should drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not answering a question to you. Drink some more water. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the air <laughs> yeah uh in terms of what people can expect i have a new single that's planned for mid to late october and it's a really important song that i happened to write a couple of years ago but it's applicable now more than ever um and it's a song about how important it is to treat the people next to you with dignity and respect and we are all sort of cut from the same cloth. There isn't as much that separates us as the media likes to make us believe and textbooks like to make us believe. We really are pretty much the same. And so I wrote a song about that and it's planned to come out late October.